With an abundance of dying stars, icy worlds, rogue comets, black holes, and even cannibal galaxies, space sure is one spooky place. But one particular area of space, known as the Boote's Void, perhaps takes the title for officially being one of the most mysterious places in outer space. The massive expanse of emptiness is nearly 300 million light years wide, and unlike any observed in the universe. Welcome to Factnominal. And for today's video, we take a journey to yet another one of space's many mysteries that science just can't seem to explain, the Boote's Void. When you hear the word void, you would simply understand it as being empty, pure nothingness. And in space, well, it gets even more interesting. Cosmic voids and supervoids are basically large volumes of space that are completely devoid of any matter. This may include normal matter in the form of galaxies as well as dark matter. So when exactly were these voids discovered? It all began in 1961 when some large structures were brought to the attention of the astronomical community. Without the kind of technology we now have today, it was unclear what exactly these were and that clarity didn't come until years later. The study of cosmic voids itself began way back in the mid-1970s when something called red shift surveys had led a team of astrophysicists to identify superclusters and voids within the distribution of galaxies. The new red shift surveys completely revolutionized the field of astronomy and added so much more depth to the two-dimensional maps that were previously being used. With the help of these surveys, we were then able to study maps of cosmological structures in a more precise manner and brought about some much needed clarity. This allowed for what we know as the 3D mapping or three-dimensional mapping of the universe. In 1978, two papers on the topic of voids in the large-scale structure were released, referencing the voids found in the foreground of the Coma A 1367 clusters. But 1981 proved to be the true year of breakthrough. It was Robert Kirshner, who at the time was working at the University of Michigan to calculate the redshifts of a great number of galaxies. Now, due to the way our universe is expanding, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it moves, which means red shift can be used to measure distance. Taking advantage of this very fact, Kirshner and his team were attempting to create a 3D map of the universe. But as they went on with their mapping, they soon realized something just wasn't quite right. At a distance of 700 million light years from planet Earth, there was just a blank void a spherical region that was about 330 million light years wide where there were barely any galaxies at all. This was contradictory, of course, to what was previously believed about the universe. As they were unable to completely explain why the region didn't seem to have anything there, the area came to be known as the Great Nothing. The Great Nothing was given the name Boötes Void for lying in the constellation Boötes. The team of researchers also published all their surprising discoveries in the paper, A Million Cubic Megaparsec Void in the Boötes. Ever since then, the surveys have been able to create much more detailed maps of our universe. As opposed to what was previously thought, we now know that the galaxies in the universe are arranged sort of like a giant web. Throughout the galaxy, you will find long structures known as filaments. Cosmic filaments are dense, skinny strands of dark matter in galaxies. They hold most of the universe's mass and you can think of the filaments as the threads connecting the cosmic web. The place where these filaments meet, and there are a large number of galaxies, is known as a cluster. And it is here, in between these threads and clusters, that we find huge empty voids of… nothingness. Over the years of studying these maps of the universe, astronomers and researchers were in fact astonished to find that about 80% of the observable universe is actually just made up of these voids. Not to mention the fact that most of them are around 30 to 300 million light years across. These are the largest known structures in the universe, and we are learning more and more about them every year. This brings us to the burning question, how were these voids formed, or did they always exist? The true cause of these voids is said to be closely tied to the origin of the universe. In the early days of the cosmos, all the matter in the universe was tightly packed together. At first, it was thought to be uniform, but random quantum fluctuations soon began creating small differences in the distribution of this matter. Over time, some of these areas were slightly more dense, which means that the gravitational pull was greater. 
therefore they pulled matter away from the less dense areas. At the same time, the universe was expanding greatly, so the fluctuations that had begun at a quantum level now spanned hundreds of millions of light years. The significantly smaller clumps of matter began to organize themselves into what we know today as galaxies. Although this doesn't answer their existence completely, this seems to be the more acceptable theory as to why and how these voids exist. Some suggest that the super voids could have been formed when two or more ordinary voids could have collided with each other. Others say it may have something to do with intelligent life beyond our planet that could possibly be hiding something there. There have been several conspiracy theories over the years, each one wackier than the next. But then again, space is just one of those places where anything seems possible. The Boötes supervoid, or Great Boötes Void, measures somewhere between 250 to approximately 300 million light years in diameter. To put that into perspective, one light year is equivalent to the distance that light travels in one year on planet Earth. It represents approximately 0.27% of the diameter of the observable universe, which itself is a daunting 93 billion light years across. The Boötes Void is a giant hole in the universe, with its volume estimated at 236,000 million cubic parsec cubed, making it one of the largest known voids in the entire universe. After its discovery, all attention was on the Boötes Void. Researchers were astonished to find just how sparse the area really is. It's important to note here, though, that after lots of observation, it was found to have at least 60 galaxies. For us, that may seem like a lot, but it's almost insignificant in terms of space. Astronomer Greg Aldering put things into perspective when he stated, If the Milky Way had been located in the center of the Boötes Void, we wouldn't have known there were even other galaxies until the 1960s. Wouldn't that be something? Living in a world where you believe that your galaxy is the only one out there, only to be neighbors with huge monster galaxies and not even know about them. Our own Milky Way has around two dozen neighbors within three million light years of space. So, by those statistics, the Boötes Void should have at least 10,000 galaxies. But the reality is just a mere spattering of about 60 odd galaxies millions of light years away from each other. What astronomers are even more bothered by is the fact that the galaxies that were found inside the void were significantly less bright than the average galaxy. There probably are some dwarf galaxies within the void, but they haven't been a belt to detect the same as yet. What's quite interesting too is the fact that galaxies are found in a tube area that runs through the void, which only further supports the hypothesis that the void could have been formed through the merger of smaller voids. The Boote supervoid is quite the mystery and some even say to fully explain its existence, we would have to modify our existing theory of the Big Bang itself. Both quantum mechanics and gravity played a role in forming the supervoid, but no one really has found a way of combining the two in a way that we can understand this gigantic cosmic hole. Boote's supervoid may be the most infamous and largest one yet, but it's not the only one that has scientists and astronomers puzzled. After the Big Bang, the universe was glowing extremely bright and was so hot that atoms couldn't form. Eventually, after things cooled down, most of the energy from the event took the form of light. This afterglow is known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. Today, with the help of modern technology and advanced telescopes, it can be seen at microwave frequencies unviewable to human eyes. It has tiny little fluctuations in temperature that can actually provide information about the early universe. So in simple terms, by looking at the CMB, scientists can find variations in the temperatures in the universe. Through these variances, we are able to see where things are more clustered, like, say, galaxies, for example. It would also be able to show where things are completely empty, like a void. The CMB anomaly, the largest cold spot that was ever found, is theorized as being a supervoid. The only problem was a cold spot in the CMB that scientists just could not seem to explain. There were indeed many theories floating around at the time about what this could possibly be. With the help of data collected by the Dark Energy Survey using a map of dark matter, the researchers made a startling discovery. 
This was no cold spot, but yet another super void. In the constellation Eridanus, one of the largest structures known to humanity stretching out at a distance of 1.8 billion light years, proved to be the answer to the cosmic wave background anomaly. It has been observed to contain about 30% less matter than its surrounding galactic region, much like the Boote supervoid. The Eridana supervoid is extraordinarily large and approximately 500 million light years across, and is the largest known structure of the universe. Of course, not everyone thinks that the cold spot is a void. The explanation is far too simple for them. One researcher even believes that the CMB cold spot could be an imprint of another universe, the doorway to other realms. Laura Mersini Hofton, the one who came up with this theory, suggested that this region came about through a form of quantum entanglement that occurred between our universe and a parallel universe before they were separated. As far-fetched as it may seem, it sure is an interesting hypothesis. But if the hypothesis were to hold up, there would indeed have to be evidence in the form of a mirror supervoid located in the opposite hemisphere. Oddly enough, there actually was a supervoid in the southern hemisphere that was discovered, which just seemed to fit the bill for this theory perfectly. Though it still might be a stretch, it's sure worth mentioning, as there is no condense in exactly where the mirror void should be located. Another theory proposed by Lawrence Rudnick from the University of Minnesota states that the Eridanus void is not a conventional void at all, but actually it is a universe in mass black hole that has consumed all the matter in its vicinity. In short, it simply ate up everything that was surrounding it, and that's why there's literally nothing left. He and his team strongly believe that dark energy, the force that is responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe, is all just an illusion that has been brought on by the gravitational effects of a supermassive black hole that lies at the very edge of our universe. With theories like that, it's quite possible that the cold spot itself never existed in the first place, putting all theories and arguments to rest. For years, scientists have been trying to figure a way out of the cold spot argument which had plagued them for years. However, the super void solution comes with one major problem. The standard cosmology models just simply don't fit in. According to them, the void should not exist at all. A study that was conducted in 2017 states that the studies conducted showed no evidence that associated voids in the line of sight could have been the cause for the CMB cold spot and that it may instead have a primordial origin. This only made the arguments for a parallel universe stronger. Later in December 2021, the Dark Energy Survey, after analyzing their data, actually put forward strong evidence for a direct correlation between Eridana Supervoid and the CMB cold spot, which seemingly put to rest a lot of the more far-fetched theories out there, bringing it down to the simple answer, nothing. Then we have yet another void, the Taurus Void, adjacent to the Perseus-Pisces supercluster. Unlike Bootes and Eridanus, this void isn't as big, but by no means is it insignificant. A few galaxies were actually found in this void, UGC 2627 and UGC 2629, which are approximately 185 million light years away. But where this void is unique is that it is actually close to Earth. But despite its proximity, this void is not well studied at all. Why you ask? Well, thanks to something known as the Zone of Avoidance, ZOA, the areas of the sky that are obscured by the Milky Way. The Taurus void lies right behind this area, making it one of the most difficult to study. Because there is so much area of the void that lies behind an area of high extinction, scientists are faced with that challenge of trying to determine its density and true dimensions. Even when it comes to galaxies, light from dimmer galaxies lying behind the Milky Way would probably extinguish before it could even reach Earth, making it all the more difficult to determine where it is truly a void. This, however, was soon settled. When the void was observed in the infrared spectrum, there was then no doubt that the void was indeed just that, a vast expanse of nothing. Some other notable voids researchers have come across are Canis Major Void, Columba Void, Microscopium Void, Sculptor Void, etc. These, of course, are simply what we have been able to observe for now. How many more regions of empty space are out there? No one really knows yet. 
Could there be any better explanations for why these voids exist and remain the way they are? Though there might be so much more to learn about these large structures in space, there's one thing that's for certain. The universe is so much bigger than we could ever comprehend. The discovery of supervoids like Baotis, Eridanus, and more offers a humbling reminder of the vastness of the world, beyond our home planet, and how much we are yet to learn about the universe we live in. So, what are your thoughts about these massively mysterious supervoids? Tell us in the comments. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another video from us. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.